Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the channel. Oh, I just saw feathers. <laughs> there was an error. <laughs> Unusual manifestations have been happening in slow amounts, so, um, and I've been noticing. But anyway, welcome back to the channel, guys. So welcome, welcome. If you're new here, we welcome you. You were probably divinely guided by Holy Spirit to obtain a piece of the puzzle, something that you're missing. So I apologize for the bad lighting today. Um, I don't know. Um, I think we need... 60 white light bulbs, so we have 40 um, instead. So we're gonna have to rock with it anyway. So you were probably divinely guided by Holy Spirit to obtain a, a little piece of the puzzle, something that you're missing. Um, so we're happy that you're guided. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. So anyone that needs to receive this message, I supernaturally divinely align you through all time, realm, space, realities to this video, depending, uh, non-dependent of which country, anywhere that you are, in the name of Jesus. You will pick it up in the algorithms in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, have your angels carry this to the people that need to hear it. At the time that they need to hear it succinctly in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, um, if you're my old Jay, old Jay's, welcome back, old Jay's, welcome back, oh, oh, welcome back, old Jay's, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Give me my hug, family, I need it, trust me. Woo, there's another feather. <laughs> so, oh, look in the lights, <laughs> y'all. Whatever he, Lord wants to do, I'm gonna let him do it. It's his, it's his world. I'm just, I'm just a squirrel. So, um, I got this message at 7.53 p.m. yesterday, and this morning God was actually adding to the message as well. It's important, and this one is called Access the uh, Deny Delilah, Warning to the Body. Um, of course, there's normal and regular stuff that's going on too. I'm always, um, so for people who are new and don't know, I am um, what you would term as a double entendre in the body. So God uses me on the polar opposites of everything. I'm also, he uses me in different ways. Um, Micah, so <laughs> if everybody's going left, I'm gonna give you the right side. <laughs> so um, uh, you're gonna see from different angles and different perspectives too. But we all see differently. We all see and know in part. So um, this might be long, I don't know. I just have to get the message out and God was literally um, giving more and more revelation this morning. Um, as I was saying, Lord, is that it? He's like, in another one, and another one. I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> some more. So, um, this is what he said. Access denied, warning to the body, Delilah. So, access denied, Delilah, warning to the body. So, God said, um, don't be so fast to want to receive relief that you give the enemy information. And then he said, inside information. And I said, Papa... What do you mean? You know, and the Lord showed me Samson and Delilah. Okay. He said Samson was so in a hurry to receive relief. He was tired and waiting and full of heartache. And I heard the Lord say vulnerable that Samson was in a hurry to have a soft place to land. That he literally walked into the tent of the enemy Delilah and gave her inside information that God only gave him. He turned and gave that inside information to the enemy. God then showed me Jacob and Esau in the Bible, okay? And, um, oh, I heard that Holy Spirit. Okay, I gotcha. Um, and that is in Genesis 25, uh, 29 through 34. And I'm going to read it out to you. So it says, once Jacob was cooking some stew, and there's noise in the background. My son is actually cooking too. So once Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open county, famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of the stew. I'm famished. This is why he was also called Edom, is in parentheses in the Bible. Jacob replies, first, sell me your birthright, okay? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath. So in other words, he waited, thank you, Holy Spirit, for a vulnerable time to make him swear something so that he could illegally obtain something that did not belong to him, okay? Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he said, before I give you this stew, and, he, and obviously it says he came in, he was famished, okay? Just keep in your mind vulnerable state, okay? Um, but Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. So because he was in that vulnerable position, he did it, okay? Now, okay, let's keep reading. And Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. Now, so for some bread and some lentil stew, God said not valuable. He ate and drank, and then he got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Understand that. You got to get it. Okay, so pay attention. It says Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. Okay, so then God took me to how spiritual warfare will make you exhausted. And specifically this morning, he said, narcissistic rage. I would suggest that you look it up. 
um, will make you exhausted is what he said. Um, and understand that these spirits right now that we're dealing with, which is the J spirit, the A spirit, you know, the, the big, the big guys, um, are narcissists. Okay. The spiritual narcissist. Okay. So I then heard, um, God say, Specifically this morning, he said, narcissistic rage will make you exhausted. So the point is to literally exhaust you and drain you. And anyone that's dealt with a narcissist knows this, okay? Um, they know this for sure, is to drain you, um, make you dependent on them, you know, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, but he he likened it, thank you, Holy Spirit, to spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare also makes you exhausted, Okay. Um, he, he's, oh, he's had and so I just thought, Angel, you know, um, the enemy, when casting spells, they like to use energy vortexes, um, emotional vortexes in order to exhaust you, but also to harness, that's my alarm, and also to harness that emotional energy. So again, just remember all of these different situations of exhausted. And then I heard God say, be strong and be of good courage. Okay. So I have heard this two times because I normally do not say this, but I'm hearing the Holy Spirit very clearly. He wants me to point this out, and then we'll get back to the text. It's not in my notes, but he did kind of show it to me in my vision and say it. And I was like, Lord, are you sure? Because I don't say anything, especially about anyone in my past, um, unless the Holy Spirit guides me. So um, this is a true story. I think I brought it up maybe one other time. I don't know if I did or it didn't, but um, I was married, and uh, I've been married twice. So in my second marriage, um, this was about the time that that same spirit was manifesting in um, my life. And uh, the J spirit, and you said to just clarify. So um, I would get up every morning and I would tell my uh, ex-husband my uh, dreams that God gave me or visions or whatever. And um, literally, I heard him so clear this day when I was about to get up because I was so excited. I was learning in God. I was growing in God and all those kind of things. And I would get up and I would just give the information. And this morning, God said very clearly, he said, no. And it was stern. I was like, woo. And I, like, as I was about to do it. And I said, what, Lord? And he's like, no. And I'm like, what? And he goes, I told you, not him. And I did not know at the time. Oh, now it makes sense, Holy Spirit. That he was looking at his heart, right? And he was looking at who he was going to become. And he was saying, no. Now, shortly thereafter, Lord had me leave my marriage, right? So, um he literally directed me and told me to leave. So he was literally looking and saying, no. So what he's saying now, thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, access is not granted to everyone. Even in some of these situations, um, to partners. Okay. I heard that to partners. Now what I'm talking about is I'm, of course, I'm not talking about a divine partnership, but not everybody has that, but understand Thank you, Holy Spirit, come through. You have to lean on God in this time frame because he sees the end. Thank you, Holy Spirit, come through. He sees the end from the beginning. Okay, I heard that very clearly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to be obedient. Okay, so then I heard, um, be strong and of good courage, which is Joshua 1, 9. So understand in these situations, you want to be strong and of good courage. That's what the Holy Spirit was saying. I, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Uh, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. Okay. He pointed out at the moment of vulnerability that he had devalued what was extremely valuable when he sold his birthright. Excuse me. I heard the Holy Spirit's uh, clearest day say long-term vision versus short-term wants. Thank you. He said, I'm a multi-generational blessing God. God's always thinking long-term. So what is presenting itself is short-term in some instances. But understand that what you're carrying, chosen ones, is very valuable. And it is not to be gained access to everyone, nor are they to be near you. Okay? So um, short-term ones. He said, eternal value versus earthly value. He said, they're not the same. Okay? God said, this is why I have to be your soft place to fall in this season. He said, um, which is the closeness, you have to cling to God and cleave to God like never before. Um, and you have to, he has to be your soft place, okay, to fall in this season. Very 
Very important in the season. Okay, he then showed me crowds of people pressing in and fame for some of his chosen ones. And he showed me Jesus pulling away to spend time with our father repeatedly next. And the Bible is filled with these accounts. Just look them up. Jesus repeatedly withdrew from the crowds to seek God's face alone to continue his walk. And he said, as Jesus walked right now, so should you. So he knew and understood the value of hearing only the Father's voice. Because when you have all those people around you and you're doing demonic deliverance, you're going to hear many voices. Okay, you're going to see many things. And it can be overwhelming. And thank you, Holy Spirit, he's adding. And that can be exhausting too. And those who are sensitive, you know, like me, we understand that. And you have to pull away into the Father to have that time so that you can hear his voice distinctly. We're going to tie this in because it ties into many things, but he wants to get this out. God then said, someone is coming to set you up. They're trying to make it so comfortable for you that you'll reveal these confidential secrets like Delilah. I heard God say, master, these are master manipulators. So um, he's talking about, thank you, Holy Spirit. The subtle, come through Holy Spirit. The subtleties, if I'm saying the word right, the subtleties of the way they enter and the way they present themselves and Thank you, Holy Spirit, and keeping their hands clean. It's a lot more. You have to say the Holy Spirit is going to reveal more. He said, access denied. They don't have security clearance. And then he broke that down. He repeated the words that I left on another previous video. And I'll find the link and I'll link it here. It's um, snakes in the grass showing their character that he uh, that seemed odd to me at time. There was another video too recently. And I'll link that here too. Um, that in the middle of the video, the Holy Spirit come, came through and he said, you need to ask who sent you. And I was like, huh? You know, but I just, well, I go with the Holy Spirit. He says, now it's making sense. He's now building on it. So you need to ask who sent you. And what that means is this. He then showed me gold wrap snake oil. Okay. So, um, and he was showing me it was selling like hotcakes and it was well received, well, like popular and high demand. Get the, listen, listen real carefully. It's popular and in high demand on top of it. Okay, appears one way, but is but is another way entirely. And now he, you know, after that he gave me more meat. And today he said they don't have security clearance. And what he was talking about is the these people are kind of like the Delilahs. You know, they're kind of like in the same category. Um, I heard him say very clearly, check security clearances each and every time. Hear that in the spiritual realm every time. No, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Like Monopoly, you're not going nowhere till you check security clearances. Do you hear me? So um, he said you cannot get into restricted areas of even government without security clearance. He said this is a process to obtain a security clearance and to and access uh, to into restricted areas. Okay, so he's liking it. He's liking it to the government. You just can't walk up into the government and just like, hey, I want to. I want to get into the reserve. It's not going to happen. <clears throat> Security instances. There's multiple checks. Okay. So um, I'll thank you. Holy Spirit. He's coming through. He said, <clears throat> test the spirit by the spirit. So no, you have to know and test the spirit. Every single spirit, every single time, me included. No person's exempt at this point. Not one. Okay. I don't care how long you know them. I don't care because they can morph in and out of bodies right now. And not everything you see is human. We're going to get into that too. So he then said, you need to pull it down from heaven, not earth, not opinion, not reputation. Some of these people are strategically located and placed in these positions. He showed me even judges on the earth too. And that same thing. So um, he said, no, no man after the flesh, very sternly, very sternly. So second Corinthians five sixteen, God then played the song that he had played before a warning song. And it was backstabbers by the old Jays. And that's on the video down here, the snakes in the grass, which he was talking about it. And I strongly suggest you go look at it and um, listen to the lyrics. I'll link it here. It might not be today because I'm running out the door, but um, listen to the lyrics as well. But he said, these are friendly, connected backstabbers. So understand that these are friendly, connected backstabbers. First time he's talking about it, they were straight up backstabbers, you know, so it was easier to perceive. These are not easier to perceive. And I want to make that very clear um, as well. <clears throat> he then showed me a clean cut guy morphing into a snake. And I tell you, so clean cut, you would not think it. OK, because um, I'm a seer, I can see things. So I would perceive it. But if you're just regular, just discerning, you would not perceive it. It would be the last person on earth that you would suspect. 
once you um, one you would not think is a snake then he showed me him morphing back into a clean-cut guy then he showed me this guy standing over a murder scene that he did but nobody would ever believe it was him he had he had set himself up this way he got a clean getaway heard killed oh heard uh, he I heard killed uh, he had killed the person um, executioner and he was a very uh, sorry skilled executioner he had killed the guy but he was a skilled executioner listen to these words very carefully he then had uh, ministered uh, he had oh he had then mastered uh, one of being which you would think would be okay he had then mastered this art of being a skilled executioner with clean hands and he was one you would never think would not have your best interest at heart. I just saw a feather fly <laughs> up. Would not have your best heart at interest. Um, not not have your best interest at heart. You would never ever think this guy wouldn't. Like he was the Holy Spirit was showing it to me. Um, outwardly you would not think that. But the guy showed. Uh, but God. But then God showed me his heart inwardly, and it was full of death and lies. And in the spiritual realm, um, I could smell the stench of the sin. It was great from him. Like great. Like it was multiple graveyards full like five to seven graveyards full okay um let me see yahweh then showed me um him in the true he break it down because remember a lot of this is layers and no one tells you that i mean stephanie does talk about it and i love her for doing that um a lot of this is layers so he broke it down even further he showed it to me he showed me the guy in his true snake reptilian form look it up whatever if you don't know what a reptilian is look it up he first showed me his mouth in the spiritual realm, and it was black as tar and deep as a tunnel. It was literally a tunnel, and it was a tunnel of death. And then he overlaid um, it with um, this video below. Um, I'm gonna link it too. So the video below is the one. It's the one where it's talking about. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. There's two. He's giving me two now. So there's two videos down here. One is um, has the picture of this, the guys in the sewer. He's overlaying it with that one, and the, that's a meaty message. So you're gonna have to watch that video, um, as well as three. Now he's giving me three, as well as um, spiritual front man, which is down here too. And what's the other one, Holy Spirit? There's one other one. Oh, he's saying there's a lot. I'm gonna link them down here. Blood on their hands. Uh, the one with the tunnel, spiritual front man, and um, the is so he's basically. I'm going to tell you what he's basically saying he's basically saying they have something to do with these tunnels, and that's going to come out soon, um, which is great because I just watched the video after his mind was probably about a year ago, um, and I just saw our brother Alan. Um, he just did a video on it. Alan saw from above the scene with the hazmat suits but a year ago when god showed it to me i saw below in the tunnels and i went identified that it was in new new york so um you know sometimes god will give me the states and I'll, or i'll know or i have a knowing but um specifically a lot of times he doesn't but sometimes he does i'm not gonna say he doesn't or i'll know where it is but i may not have permission to say at that time or um he doesn't put it out somebody else is gonna put it out so alan just did a video i might be able to link that to all this is gonna happen tomorrow because it's not gonna happen today so and god was showing me um one of these men but you would never in a million years guess it and understand at uh at the Illuminati level, level and some levels um, below, they do things to block spiritual perception of the anointed children of God. So um, they do spells to block that. Those intercessors are here right now. Can you hear me now like Rosa? Good. Okay, so they do not want you messing up their disgusting depths of evil, basically. So pray these structures fall permanently uh saints of god intercessors if you picking up what i'm throwing down you're getting it real quick i hope so god was showing me on this level meaning this new level so we're transitioning back on this on this new level which is these backstabbers who seem very friendly um he was showing me they're transitioning oh well meaning on the new level meaning this new level his children are transitioning a lot of his children are transitioning too because i could see on this new level um, was definitely higher level that these people had mastered hidden manipulation at a very high level. So um, 
I'm going to break it down. All. So, but more importantly, what he was showing me is that they have mastered keeping their hands clean while doing these things like Delilah and these people. And again, he's repeating, just remember everything you meet is not human on this level. So God is exposing all. Pay attention. He said, keep your hearts pure. Keep God first in everything. Pull away with God to get your answer. He then showed me anyone that doesn't want you to pull away to get the answer from God and confirmation something is wrong. He even showed me a vision of a man fearful of you doing this and him trying to interject in the process and he wasn't human and he was a reptilian. And um, it's actually interesting because um, Francis Miles, I think he, uh, it's, it's, it's right a year and a half ago, God had me watch a video and it's true because I knew it to be true. Um, he was talking about how his friend was, um, I don't know what video it was, guys, or I'd link it, uh, how his friend was um, high up in the military and the government and he was called into this meeting and in this meeting um, were Masons, people high up in military rankings and so forth. And this guy was coming to make a proposal to them. And this other guy was Christian, very high discerning, and he knew him. And uh, basically what happened was when he came in the room, he said the first thing he noticed was the smell of fish. It just smelled fishy, like the ocean, right? And um, he was like, that's just and the Holy Spirit started talking to him, you know. So this is the high level discernment that's going to be needed on this level. The Holy Spirit started talking to him and, you know, the guy said, well, you know, do we have a deal? He was trying to make a deal at the table. And the Holy Spirit told uh, the chosen one, uh, tell him you got to think about it. And the guy freaked out. He says, he doesn't have to think about it. He's like, he's going to talk to God about it. And we're going to get into why that is. And that was true. So, um, So understand what I just said. So this man that I just said was fearful, just like this guy was, uh, that if you sat with God, you're going to get the answer. So I'm going to go back to this meeting that Francis had um, talked about. So what happened was um, after the meeting, you know, all these high military people um, came up to him and said, you made the right decision. He's like, you know, yeah, I just didn't feel right. And, and they said, you don't understand. He said, they were telling him, this guy spends a year under the sea and he only comes up certain times. They were putting him up on game. They were letting him know. That's why you smell the fish. You cannot ignore anything right now. Nothing. Nothing. I heard Holy Spirit say, don't let anything fly under the radar that you don't notice. Come through, Holy Spirit, come through. Nothing. I don't care if it's a smell. I don't care if it's a look. I don't care what it is. Don't let nothing fly under the radar that you don't notice. Okay. So, back to what I was saying. So, understand on this level, I know what you're thinking. I've gone over this in previous videos. So, um, they know they know what you desire. So, I'm going to repeat it again because it's not really out in the body and y'all need to know. And I heard the Holy Spirit say very carefully, they package what you're um, what they're giving to you based on what you have expressed in your thoughts and your desires. So um, Jay-Z was trying to tell y'all, whether you know it or not, he said, this is high level, not eye level. This is a totally different animal. Okay. So God then showed me the same scenario um, in a different scenario with the same reptilian person um, that he showed me where he didn't want you to pray or seek God's face before getting the answer. He wanted you to move quickly. So he showed me the same um, person in a different scenario, same reptilian person and the child of God um, in his mind after the offer was presented, the same yes. Um, my prayers, the, well, what the child of God was saying in their mind was he was saying, yes, my prayers were answered. He was happy, right? And understand, tying it back into the beginning where he was exhausted, okay? And he was exhausted and waiting, okay? And, um, when the offer was presented, he was saying, my prayers are finally answered and they have been answered. And he was rejoicing because he was saying, uh, the, I'm sorry, the reptilian was rejoicing because he was saying, I got them and he had trapped them and he had. And the reptilian was reading his mind of the chosen one. This is high level, not eye level. So Holy Spirit then took me to what the devil um, took Jesus to the mount and offered him the world, the temptation. It was the same temptation, but it was subtle. So um, then he reminded me that Jesus was just like Samson, vulnerable and coming out of warfare. 
Like he compared them. Like he was like, look at these two similarities, daughter. And I'm like, okay, break it down, Holy Spirit. You know, I'd be like, break it down, Holy Spirit, break it down. Spiritual intelligence, come on. So he took me Second Corinthians 2.11. Lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And that's in, I think, King James 2 version. I'm going to read the ASV version. That no advantage may be gained over us by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, so the chosen of God, our hearts are big and they know it. Okay, so it's an attempt to use the heart like Samson. It's an attempt to pervert that which God has made beautiful for satanic gain is what I heard. Okay. Woo. Okay. In true reality, they perceive the heart. In true reality, they perceive the heart, um, the beautiful heart that God has given us to be a weakness. So they are attempting to exploit that weakness. Her God clearly say, be not deceived. I can't repeat this one enough. Be not deceived. Okay. Um, run everything uh, I need to do. Okay. He said, he said, uh, I can't repeat this enough. Run. Everything you need to run, everything by the Father. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what their reputation is. I don't care about their following. I don't care if it's the King of England. I don't care if he's calling you on the phone. I don't care if it's the president you've always wanted to meet. I don't care if it's a superstar you wanted always wanted to meet. I don't care if it's your favorite superstar. I don't care if it's the person you have had as a crush since you were born. I do not care. It is dangerous for you, chosen one, not to run everything by the Father right now. Okay? So, he then showed me that the enemy comes um, like an agent of light. So, he showed me the scripture um, the, where the enemy comes in like an angel of light. Okay? And then uh, some of these things are going to be strategically positioned as things you absolutely want and as light. And at this level, uh, that's going to happen a lot. Okay, he's saying that. So um, you're carrying something eternal. He said, kingdom glory. Okay, so then he took me to Isaiah 60, 30, uh, 63. And he said, nations will come to your light and kings will come to the brightness of your dawn. There are those good. Okay, so he then he broke it down, which we know. So there's good kings and evil kings in the Bible, even attest to this. Okay, and you, beloved, he said, will have to discern correctly. Okay, so thank you. He's showing me in a vision. You're going to, in some cases, you may be caught up in, like, the, the new surroundings. And he doesn't want you to do that. Excuse me, guys. He doesn't want you to do that. And I just saw, like, a chosen one walking through Dubai and walking through um, ornate, uh, elaborate surroundings that they're not used to. So their, their heart is engaged. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in these surroundings. But God is saying you need to disengage it and discern, okay? Still keep your heart. But disengage and discern correctly. Okay. So, yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's different. Yes, it's nothing you ever experienced. And it's more than you ever imagined. Um, you know, but you have still have to discern correctly. Okay. Spirit, use your spiritual intelligence to discern correctly exactly what's going on. And I'm talking about you go in that castle, you go in that mansion, you go in that, um, you know, that 50 acre farm, whatever, and something don't smell like, right, something don't look right, something sounds weird, you feel a weird vibe discern thank you holy spirit he's saying say it again daughter sternly discern so um so and you beloved and you beloved he said you will have to discern correctly so and this is all holy spirit now this so he brought me to the scripture that those that wait on the lord shall renew their strength he broke this down to the least common denominator too remember we were going to go back to what we were talking about where the person didn't want you oh i just thought the person didn't want you to literally um, sit with the Father. Remember that? Okay. So he took me back to the scripture. He said, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, right? And he's going over and trying to... Uh, so he's saying... Oh, okay, yeah. So um, if the person doesn't want you to wait on God, they're not of God. Say it again. Person doesn't want you to wait on God. They're not of God. They want you to move outside of time. Because if you pray and they still moving, those are some shady moves. And we know what spirits move like that. Okay. So I'm going to break this down. I'm probably have to find the video. There's going to be like 14 videos linked by tomorrow. So Holy Spirit has me do this. 
um, more than once because I can take in information from every different thing. You know, he even has me look at witchcraft stuff, all that kind of stuff. Um, Buddhism, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I ask the Holy Spirit, you know, reveal truth and he does. So um, in this one, he was saying he specifically took me to a Catholic um, exorcism, exorcist. And it was very key. It was very interesting. And I, I actually like this guy a lot. And like what he's saying and everything is true. So um, so what he was talking about, I'm breaking down very simply. It's actually complex, but I'm breaking down very simply. So he was talking about how Stanley is the inversion of the Holy Spirit. So basically, you know, it's a triune. His personality was split. And he's a triune of the inversion of the Holy Spirit. And I bind the inversion of the Holy Spirit permanently in the name of Jesus. So, um, and he was, he's Catholic, but that's not important because religion is just a construct of an attempt to contain God and God being infinite being and the Holy Spirit being infinite is just a construct to contain and label it. So, um, but there's truth and God is the God of truth. So you will be able to discern truth by going through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You just broke that down right now. Go daddy. So, um, I digress. So catch this. So in heaven, this is true. We've gone over this before many times and people who have had NDE, which is near death experiences, they'll test this. They can just think about something and they'll be in that place. They can think, I want to go to the garden and they go to the garden. Okay. So I'm tying this back into what I was talking about, the reading thoughts. So, and they just, they're in the garden. They're there. Okay. Cause remember there's no time is a construct that we're in. That's all I gotta say. So they think of something and they're there. Supernatural transportation, which is on deep uh, believers, uh, YouTube page, you can look that up too. You'll see it. And they talk about it too. So they just literally think about it and they're there. Okay. So uh, let me get back to this. So we know that this is basically the heavenly blueprint, which I said before. And these, if you ever listen to any of their stories, they're not talking typically. They don't talk. They communicate through thought. They travel instantly through thought. So they're willing themselves to be in a certain area or they think about it and they're there. So this guy basically on this video broke it down and he said, understand that demons are the same way. They're basically, they're forcing their will on you. And he's saying that they literally don't have emotions. They can take on or inhabit the body of the emotions of the person, but they don't have those emotions. They're willing things to happen. So my point being, Angels and demons came out of heaven. So they didn't lose these abilities. Remember, these gifts are without repentance, just like on earth. <coughs> Excuse me. So when they go to do evil to you, which is what he was saying, you're literally fighting against shield or shield like willpower of something supernatural. And their whole point is to wear you down, basically. And understand in the spiritual realm, it's stronger than the physical realm. So that's, you know, hence the reason why you can go back to the example I gave earlier. Jesus was fasting to get spiritual power for what was coming. Okay, so um, follow along. When you break this down for, uh, and you're thinking about the example of Jesus in the wilderness and stained glass, you know, Stanley Double Dice, where he wants to call himself today, and um, Jesus and Samson and Delilah, Jesus was fasting, which means he was spiritually strong but physically weak. Same thing had just come off, Samson had just come off of heartbreak, which means he was physically heartbroken, but physically, but uh, he was, he was heartbroken, but physically strong. Pay attention. Those are two opposite dichotomies. Pay attention to both. Both were tempted. Both responded differently. Jesus used the word, which was the foundation. So the Bible clearly says that everything will pass away, but the word will stand. Stained glass, Stanley, devil diagnosis. And he knew this. So remember, everything will pass away, but the word still stands because everything's held by the word. Okay. So, whereas if you look at Samson, okay, Samson was looking for a place to fall, like a soft place to fall. He was looking for any type of relief. 
He was exhausted, heartbroken, but physically strong. So he was willing to share secrets with somebody, anybody that gave him relief. Pay attention. Jesus wasn't. Jesus used the word. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. It's, it's a lot. You're going to have to sit with the father. Both were in vulnerable positions. Both of them. Okay. Holy Spirit repeated it. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Anyone aligned with the Lord will allow you to wait on the Lord. They're not going to move ahead of the Lord either. Those different. Oh, wait a minute. Those different to pull. Oh, those able to pull down. Oh, so they're going to allow you to wait on the Lord. And they're able, if they're meant for you, to pull down when God has answered you. If they're good enough. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting on the Lord too. And some of them will even know when the Lord has answered you. Okay, so Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So, I'm going to leave it at that because this video is long. You need to catch these nuggets real quick because it's a lot coming down. So, it's a warning. Access denied. You move strategically in certain ways. I saw another angel. You are to ask the father of everything. There ain't nothing you doing without daddy. And not only that, he is your soft place to fall. Period. The end. If if he don't move, I heard that daddy. He's doing like a little kiss song. When I move, you move. Just like that. We said it before. If daddy ain't moving, you not moving. So if he not telling you, okay, and you getting weird discernment vibes, mm -mm, and shut it down. That's it, y'all. I'm going to have to wrap this up because this is almost a 37-minute video. So that's it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll have everything up by today or tomorrow, the links and all that kind of stuff. So, um, But I will talk to you later. Bye.